I think it's time we finally make our final record predictions for the Sun Devils football team in 2023. Let's get into it on this edition of the Locked On Sun Devils podcast. You are Locked On Sun Devils, your daily podcast on the Arizona State Sun Devils. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to the Locked On Sun Devils podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Richie Bradshaw, and I will be your guide for everything Arizona State Sun Devils. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. Thanks for making us your first listen of the day. And a shout out to my everydayers who are here every day. Wherever you're getting your podcast, hit like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. You can stay in touch with that content by following me on Twitter slash X at RichieBrads36 and the podcast as well at LO underscore Sun Devils. Download the Game Time app today, create an account, and use the promo code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Definitely recommend that one. All right, let's let's just do this. Uh, no need for too much of an introduction. What I will say is we're not going to do a deep dive into every single game because there are twelve games to get through. I will be doing deep dives for every game as we go through the season and for tomorrow's episode of the podcast in. Celebration of the first game, I will be doing my deep dive for the Southern Utah game. But stick around until then as we predict each game. We're going to break this up pretty much into um, four different, or not four, like three different segments like we normally do. But we'll have four games, four games, four games. So we'll go ahead and start with the first four games of the year, which are all home games. You'll have your three out-of-conference games to start the year before kicking off Pac-12 play against USC. We'll jump right into uh, Southern Utah. Look, this is a win. This You can chalk that up right now. This is a win for Sun Devils football now. While I'll tell you I'm not the most educated on Southern Utah, what I can tell you is they are FCS-level competition, and they are not a, a football team that should be challenging Arizona State no matter the state of the program and the fact that they're rebuilding and retooling or whatever you would like to call it, this is this is still inferior competition. Arizona State's got several incredibly talented kids that'll be able to take on whoever uh, Southern Utah is able to throw out there. Now, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you it's gonna be like 50 to nothing. I do expect them to win by more than two possessions, I would say. But like I said, we'll dive a little deeper into that. The other thing I'll tell you guys is that Arizona State has been on a 23-game win streak for their home openers dating back to 1999, the only exclusion being 2020, where their home opener wasn't until December in that really weird COVID year. But yeah, 23 straight home wins in their home opener. That's not changing. Chalk it up for 24. If if that if Arizona State loses, I I don't even know. I'll like redo the ice bucket challenge, I guess, from like 10 years ago. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll redo that and I'll post it. If if Southern Utah beats Arizona State, I will redo the ice bucket challenge. But I feel pretty confident that that's not going to happen. Second game of the year is Oklahoma State. And this is going to be our future Big 12 rival, Oklahoma State. This is going to be a really exciting game, you know. Last year, I really thought that Arizona State played a much closer game than given credit for. Like, I believe the final was 34-17, something like that. And even though Arizona State won by three, or lost, excuse me, lost by three possessions, I still felt like it was a closer game than the scoreboard indicated. Like, if you watched all 60 minutes of that game, it was really not as big a loss as the scoreboard indicated. Now they're coming to Tempe this year, and they're going through some changes because Spencer Sanders, their longtime quarterback, transferred over to Ole Miss. They've got pieces on the defense that are no longer there. Tyler Lacey was one of the defensive linemen who absolutely terrorized Arizona State. He is gone. Colin Oliver is still there, and he's a beast. There's, there's, There's a lot of changes going on at Oklahoma State, and I really, really want to take Arizona State here. But for right now, I am withholding that. And I am going to give them a loss here 
against Oklahoma State. But what I will tell you is there's a handful of games on the schedule that I believe could be toss-ups. This is one of the many games that I think could end up being a toss-up for Arizona State. They, It's really just going to depend on how Arizona State re- responds to change and how Oklahoma State responds to change. These are going to be two teams that are pretty different compared to what we saw last year. Arizona State entirely is a brand new football team, almost from top to top to bottom. Oklahoma State, again, I haven't done too much deep research, but I can tell you when you lose your starting quarterback that this is definitely a team that is going to be very different. Right now, I've got Oklahoma State winning that game. Don't be surprised if I change that, depending on how these team, two teams look in week one. Week three against Fresno State, I understand that Jake Hayner is no longer there, and I understand that they're going to be going through a transition with Mikey Keene as their quarterback now, but I still think that Fresno State is a really good football team, and I'm not ready to take Arizona State over them just yet, and I know that's going to make a lot of you angry. Totally get it, but Fresno State's a really good football program, and I am I thought they had entered the year ranked. I'm pretty sure they were ranked at the end of the year, and they're not ranked at least in the coaches' poll. Maybe they're in the AP poll, but they're they're not ranked as of right now and i think that that's probably going to change as long as they end up looking like the team that i think they're going to be now that's where as of right now i'm taking the bulldogs over arizona state this is another game where i will tell you this is a toss up i would not be surprised if arizona state was able to come out and beat fresno state but it's just going to pe- going to depend on how Fresno State is going to respond to a different quarterback and changing at the guard. If they respond well, then yeah, they should beat Arizona State. But if they don't, then there's another opportunity for Arizona State. And there's a, there is, believe it or not, a real possibility Arizona State could open up the year three and up. It's not the craziest um, out of, out of conference schedule for the team. Oklahoma State's probably the toughest team and they could be beatable. We'll just wait and see. And then we'll see with Fresno State. They should be uh, Southern Utah. I've got them going one and two. I know a little pessimistic. You guys will love me later on in the podcast. I promise you. But I will tell you, there's a there's a very real possibility that they're three and out. Now they begin Pac-12 play in just about the most difficult way possible. And even though it's a home game, you are hosting USC. That is a big fat loss my friends i look i love arizona state those are my dudes they're not winning this game and if they do then oh my god you you were gonna have to crown kenny dillingham as a god amongst men in tempe talk about a game that would activate the valley that would be it they are just a really good football team and while i still withhold them being a playoff team. In fact, they're not even my team that I'm picking to win the conference of champions. That would be Washington. While I'm not picking USC to win, they're still going to probably be in the Pac-12 championship game. They're going to be a team that's competing for the playoff all year long. They're going to be maybe a one or two loss team when it's all said and done, but they're certainly going to be able to come into Tempe get a win against a rebuilding team that's just trying to figure itself out and find a clear-cut identity for the team. Will I put it past them? No, because quite frankly, I think that Arizona State will put up a fighting chance in just about every game this year. But at the same token, I just I can't look you in the eye and tell you definitively that Arizona State's going to win this game. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But as of right now, through the first four games of the year, I do, unfortunately, have Arizona State sitting with a 1-3 and three record, and then, you know, we'll continue from there. Guys, buying tickets to your favorite events shouldn't be stressful, and I can tell you right now that I still haven't gotten my tickets for Metallica and Ice Nine Kills coming up over the weekend, but I'm not worried about it because I'm going to use Game Time because Game Time is a fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you with killer deals on last-minute tickets. With the best prices guarantee, you can stop stressing about tickets and start getting hyped for the events that you're getting ready to have. They have flash deals, 
for last minute tickets. It's easy to find and buy tickets for every kind of event in your area with an image of the seat so that you can see what the view looks like before you buy it with the lowest price guaranteed, event cancellation protection, job loss protection, and more. And they, with them guaranteeing the best price, if you find tickets in the same section and rows for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. You can get those images, make sure that it looks exactly like the view you would like before you get it, and buy those tickets in a matter of seconds. Just two taps and you're set. Tickets are sent directly to your phone, so you never have to dig through your email. Snag tickets without stress with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tix- tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Wherever you get your podcast, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get an update whenever we post new content. Because tomorrow. We are finally doing our first game preview of the year. I cannot wait, and I hope that you guys are just as excited as I am to get this ball rolling. Let's get back into the next third of the schedule for Arizona State, and this is going to be a really interesting third of the schedule for Arizona State. This is where they start to hit the road a little bit, and again, keep in mind, you have eight home games this year, so you're not necessarily having a lot of airfare this year. But they will have two two home games and two road games. And they'll be starting off on the road playing Cal. And look, good friend of the show, Spencer McLaughlin, very big fan of Cal this year, loves their over for their win total, thinks they're going to be a team rebounding. I'll believe it when I see it. Sam Jackson, cool story. He's a mobile quarterback who can do a lot with his legs and potentially beat you that way. But like I said, I'll believe it when I see it. I see Cal is still one of the seller teams of the Pac-12 for the 100th time. I'll believe it when I see it. Till then, I got Arizona State in this game. Getting back on the win on the uh, on the win track after losing three consecutive games. I now have them sitting at two and three. Before they return home to host Colorado. Goodness gracious. Does this team have enough hype? I mean. This this is a team that's won. Three games in the last two years. Something like that. It's not a good football team. I don't know what we're doing here. Trying to hype them up. And like. I've seen people on Twitter that are like. Shadur Sanders and his Heisman odds are this. And if you bet $1,000, you win $2 billion. And if you bet them winning the Pac-12, and if you bet them winning the national championship, it's like you're throwing money away. They're, they're not even going to be a 500 team. Like, just stop it with that. They're They're at least a year away. At least, probably more than that. Arizona State's got this. They're going to win this game. They won last year. In Boulder, they're coming back to Tempe. By this point, you were hopefully starting to maybe build up some attention for yourself because in a in a best case scenario, you could very well be, oh man, like a four and one team entering this. I've got them as a two and three team, but if you were able to sweep your sweep your uh oh, what's it called? Your non-conference schedule like you you could be so yeah i'm taking them in that game i'm taking them pretty comfortably that gets them back to the 500 mark and i got the sun doubles at three and three at the moment then they are heading up to pullman to play wazoo or excuse me they're heading up to seattle to play washington i should fix that in my script they're heading up to seattle to play washington now again i I picked Washington to win the Pac-12 this year. I think they're a playoff team as long as Michael Penix is healthy. Because if Penix goes down, that team's going down with him. But he proved to be healthy last year. And when he was healthy, he was one of the best pure passers in college football. He's got a Heisman case this year. And he's got some insane weapons with Jalen McMillan and Romo Dunze. Odunze who my nickname is Doomsday. I'm going to try and get that ball rolling. I told Spencer McLaughlin he likes it too. Uh, if there's a Washington fan listening to this, I Doomsday. That's what I'm going to be calling him. 
Uh, they got a good defense. Braylon Trice is out there. Like they're a really good team, and I really like them this year. I know that Arizona State has really dominated the rivalry as of late. I think somebody in my comments told me we've won 13 of the last 14, which sounds right. We've we've really handled them pretty well. I could see an upset, I guess, just knowing the track record. But guys, come on. You're going to Seattle against a team that's got national title aspirations. It's not happening. And, and just like with every other game, we'll reassess. If we enter this game as a 5-1 and one football team, then yeah, you might have to talk about ASU as being able to usurp Washington up in Seattle. But as of right now, it's a loss, and it's probably a bad loss. So I got them 3-4, and four, and then we return home to play Wazoo. This is a game that I really had trouble going back and forth with because this is this is a team that has just had our number the last handful of years and they beat us down 2 years ago for senior day we went up to Pullman last year we had a really difficult time trying to play them lost both those games we're back here and look Washington state is up and down they could win this game and they could lose this game this is another major toss up to me The problem that I have with this game is, as of right now, I have to go with Washington State because they're, as of now, a better team. But this, of all the games on here, that's probably the biggest one that I would circle as kind of like a, let's see where they're at when we we get closer to it. Like, this is week eight or week nine. I don't have the bye week in front of me. I probably should have, but this is your eighth game of the year. You could very well be a really good football team, or you could be the worst team in the pac 12 Washington state. On the other hand, could be a really good team or they could be a really bad team. They're like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Like they have some really high highs and they got some really low lows. Like I don't really know what to do with that game as of right now. Like I said, I feel like I need to take, um, Washington state for the moment. If there's one thing that would help Arizona state, it's the fact that it's going to be at home. And again, you're hoping by this point in the year that people are buying into the program, whether they're winning or losing. And we're getting people in the stands and we're getting people to invest in this team and watch the football team and whatnot. That's, that's really what you're hoping to see at this point in the season. But at least through eight games, I've got a three and five right now. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Wherever you get your podcasts, hit like, subscribe, turn on notifications because we kick off tomorrow. And with kickoff comes my game preview as I break down the offense, the defense, make some bold predictions, and predict the score as well. You guys won't want to miss it now that we are officially in football season. Last four games of the year. To this point, Arizona State is a 3-5 and football team. And it has been anything but an easy schedule. Now, granted, there has been, I have listed here, three toss-ups. With a 3-5 and five, uh, record here and three toss-ups, you could be 5-3. and three. Let's see how the rest of the schedule shakes out. You start with a two-game road trip before you close the last two games at home. Starting in Salt Lake City against Utah. I think if anybody listens to this podcast, they know that a very unpopular opinion for a Sun Devil fan, I like Utah. And they are, until further notice, the team to beat in the Pac-12. They're back-to-back champs. They still have Cam Rising at quarterback, and I understand he's rehabbing from an ACL tear, but at this point in the season, this is going to be November. He should be fine. And you're going to Utah in November. It's going to be cold. And Arizona State is not built for cold weather teams. Utah plays a very physical style of football. And they have such a good defense every single year. This is a team that can just slug you as hard as they can over and over and over again and just beat you up. It's it's just the way that they have been. 
in the Kyle Whittingham era. And he's a great coach. I don't see Utah taking a massive step back this year. I think in a worst case scenario, they're still a nine win team. They're still a really good football team. That's probably going to give USC, Washington, and Oregon some fits. So for now, I'm taking Utah in that game. It's It kills me a little bit. I know that there's a lot of you out there that hate Utah. And if you do, can you please explain to me why we hate Utah? Because I don't get it. I really like Utah. I root for them all the time. But, you know, maybe that's a cardinal sin that I'm committing. All right. So now I got them three and six. So if they were going to be a bowl team, they can no longer lose a game. But, you know, Ray Anderson handled that for us. Last road game of the year is at Pasadena in the Rose Bowl to play US, UCLA. Goodness. This is another interesting game. This is my last toss-up game. They are they're a team that's got a really easy schedule this year. But they may not they may not be that team in 2023. Right now they're they're figuring out their quarterback situation. They got the five star in Dante uh Dante Moore. They got a couple other guys there whose names are escaping me at the moment. And I don't know who's officially listed as their starter. I imagine it's more, but again, I'm not dialed into all these teams as of now. It's a very surface level research right here. Whatever they got going on, though, it's a change from Dorian Thompson Robinson, who's been their quarterback for the last 47 years, right? It's it's a change. And this isn't necessarily a elite team. There is going to be some regression, which means that they're beatable which is why I have Arizona State going to Pasadena and winning this game. It is going to allow them to be 2 and 2 on the road. One of their more signature wins of the year, in fact, to this point, that is the signature win of the year because I only have Southern Utah, Cal, and um Colorado at this point in time. But a win against UCLA is a really quality win. It's still a Chip Kelly coach team. It's a good win, guys. Take it and run. Returning home. Final two games of the year. Start with Oregon. Oregon is another team that's going to be competing for the Pac-12 championship. They're going to be competing for the playoff all year. They're hoping that Dan Lanning in his second year can start to get this defense motivated and get them to start catching up to the offensive side of the ball because Bo Nix is a Heisman Trophy heavyweight. That dude does everything. Throws the ball, runs the ball, scores touchdowns. Now, I am interested to see how he plays without Kenny Dillingham because Dillingham, who had experience with him at Auburn, got a completely different quarterback out of Bo Nix last year. Bo Nix was one of the most forgettable quarterbacks of college football. Goes to Oregon, plays with Kenny Dillingham, and is a top five Heisman guy. Like, he seriously became just a quarterback that you couldn't even recognize. He was so good. Now, is this a Kenny Dillingham thing or did Bo Nix just finally arrive? That's what we're going to find out. And they got some great other players as well. I know that Troy Franklin is going to be one of the best receivers in college football. Oregon should be able to come in and win this game pretty convincingly. I don't know. I don't know how convincingly you would consider convincingly 10 points 20 points whatever but doesn't matter because i'm taking arizona state you heard me i'm taking the sun doubles i am taking the sun doubles for their biggest statement win of the year to take down oregon in tempe we're going to right the wrong that happened back in 2015 where braylon addison was a hundred percent out of bounds in overtime and we got cheated out of that win. We are we are going to rebound this year. Kenny Dillingham is going to prove that he is one of the best offensive minds in the Pac-12. He's going to get his statement win. The fans are going to rush the field. We're going to be so excited because Jaden Rashada and Kenny Dillingham have gotten their signature win to assert themselves as a team to watch. And they say, ASU is back, baby. 
this is the win that we're talking about. This is the one that gets you excited. Arizona State is now five and six with a chance to finish with a 500 record in the first year of Kenny Dillingham with one game remaining in a two of A in Tempe. Arizona's coming up. They have not won consecutive to t- territorial cup games since like 2007, 2008, something like that. Arizona State has dominated this rivalry, and I'll say I'll save my breath right now. They're getting that cut back. You put that in pen. You tattoo it. I don't care. They're getting that cut back. 100%. I have never been more certain about anything in my entire life. Arizona State is going to be so pissed going into this game after last year. And they want to prove that they're still the big brothers in the state of Arizona. They also are going to want to prove Ray Anderson wrong in a year where he desert, decides to lay out a postseason ban for the team and no eligibility, probably with the thought process of, well, they're not even going to get to this point. Well, suddenly ASU came into this game with a five and six record. And if they won the game, they would have been bowl eligible. And guess what, Ray? They just won this game. They just won this game. They won the Territorial Cup. They brought the cup home. They went six and six in the first year of Kenny Dillingham. And now I'll answer your question because I know so many of you are wondering, hey, Richie, how come you got them six and six now? You had them at four wins all season long. Why did you why did you change the six wins? I'll tell you. And it's a very simple answer. I got to see them in person. I'll tell you what. When you watch college football teams, it's a different experience actually getting to see them in person. Take like Alabama, for example. They're going to be coming into this year kind of with weird expectations. I can tell you, me personally, I'm down on Alabama this year because we don't know what's going on at quarterback, whether it's Tyler Buckner or Jalen Milrow. But with that in mind, the moment Alabama gets on the football field, they are simply in a class of their own. They're going to be in the playoff hunt all year long. They are going to be one of the best teams all year long. It's just the way it is. But before we get to see it, we get to speculate, right? We're like, oh, what's Alabama going to do? They don't have their quarterback figured out. And then they come out in the field and it's like, oh, yeah, it's Alabama. Here's how I relate that to Arizona State is like we look and we're like, oh, it's a rebuilding team. And they don't know what they're doing on offense. And the defense is weird. And they got a freshman quarterback, right? They look at all that. But then you start watching these kids work out. You start watching these kids challenge each other. Iron sharpens iron. They really are building each other up. They're lifting each other up. They're getting the best out of each other. They're building camaraderie. They're building relationships. They're becoming teammates. They're becoming brothers. Then you introduce a coaching staff that is so invested in getting these kids back on track sooner rather than later. They've got this fire in their belly. And Kenny Dillingham has ignited it with gasoline. He is cooking right now. And these kids are buying in. And you got a coaching staff that's buying in. And they're getting these kids to buy in to a right now, not a future, not next year, not a year down the road, not two, not three years down the road. Right now, they are interested in winning right now. Not only that, but then they look at the outside noise. Nobody's expecting Arizona State to do good this year. Some people are picking them to finish last place in the Pac-12. Some people don't know if they got three wins like they did last year. There's a lot of doubt for Arizona State. And then the final nail in the coffin, your own athletic director gives you a postseason ban. He says, no, no, uh, no bowl game, no bowl game this year. Sorry. Pay for the sins of your predecessors. You have so much whiteboard material. You have so much energy, so much built up, pent up rage, I suppose, that they're just going to unleash. And I think they're going to catch a lot of people off guard this year. 
So yeah, I have been a firm. This is a four win team for most of the year. And at the end of the day, they're going to be a lot closer to a four win team than they're going to be a six win team simply because it's a rebuilding team. But you know what? This is a team that's going to shock people. This is a team that's going to be a lot better than people think. And I'll tell you right now, as I was going through, there was a handful of games that I was like, they can win, they can win, they can win. And in my head, I'm like, they can't win every game. You're being a fan right now, Richie. And maybe six wins is still being a fan. They're going to catch some teams off guard. And they're going to get a statement win. They're going to win a big game this year. They're going to get the fans excited. They're going to win the Territorial Cup. And they're going to find a way to activate the Valley. I have Arizona State at 6-6. Six and six. I have Arizona State's signature win versus Oregon. And I have Arizona State bringing back the cup. But I want to hear from you. What is your record for Arizona State in 2023? What is your signature win? And do they bring the cup back home? Let me know. Drop a comment on on, uh, YouTube. If you're on YouTube, leave a comment. I check the comments. Hit me up on Twitter slash X. You can find me at RichieBrads36 and the podcast at LO underscore Sun Devils. I would love to interact with you guys, especially with the season right here, right now. Thank you, as always, for tuning in. I'm really looking forward to finally breaking down the season with you guys. We have kickoff in one day. And tomorrow, we'll be breaking it down, going over offense, going over defense. Guys to watch for Southern Utah, guys to watch for Arizona State. I'll make some bold predictions, and I'll predict the final score. But spoiler alert, I'm taking Arizona State. Until next time, guys, you keep it locked right here on Locked on Sun Devil.